I'm Ashley from Ashley Young Music Studio. Today, we're gonna to be talking about practice tip number one, the post-it method. And this practice tip is the first of a series of three videos that I'm recording that are all going to be about how to practice the piano effectively. I made the post-it method practice tip number one because it's my absolute favorite tip. The reason it's my favorite is because it's good for beginner students, it's good for advanced students, it's good for kids, it's good for adults, it's good for any age, any skill level. It doesn't matter where you are in your piano journey, you can use this method to help you make your piano practice more efficient. This tip works really well when you're in the process of learning a piece and you're encountering things that are too challenging for you to play. So maybe you're having trouble coordinating both hands to play at the same time or to play together. This practice tip will help you. If you are struggling to connect two challenging sections in a piece of music, this is the practice tip for you. It will basically work for any challenge that you're having and you can use it in a variety of different ways once you try it and you get the hang of it. Now the reason that the post-it method works is because it helps us to understand music on a deeper level. When we are trying to learn our piece, there's a lot of stuff happening all at the same time. We are trying to focus on what's on the page, we're trying to focus on what our hands are doing, we're trying to think about rhythm, notes, all of the other musical symbols, and it can be really, really overwhelming. But using the post-its help us to really focus in on one spot of our music. If you have a particular challenge that you'd like some feedback on, feel free to comment below. And I'd be happy to let you know if this way of practicing will help you with your own specific problem. In addition to a piece of music and your instrument, you're going to need some post-its. And if you don't have any post-its, I will put a link in the description of this video so that you can purchase some. Now for the sake of this video, I'm going to be using a pretty simple piece of music. And that's because, like I said before, this technique can be used for any skill level, but I'm going to demonstrate with something a little bit on the easier side so that you can take it and apply it to whatever you need to apply it to. I'll be using page 43, a piece called Chant of the Monks, and it's from Faber's Adult Piano. I'll put a link to this book in the description below as well. Now, in order to effectively do this practice method, I'm gonna take my post-it note, and I'm going to put it just a couple of notes into the piece or into the section that I'm working on. So in this case, for Chant of the Monks, I'm gonna put it two notes into the piece. So that means that I'm only gonna be practicing two notes to start with. And I'm gonna play these two notes counting out loud, so I'm acknowledging the rhythm, and I'm gonna do it three or five or 10 times in a row until it feels really easy for me to play those exact two notes at a time and to do it well. One, two, again. One, two, again. One, two. And I would do this until that felt really, really, really easy and until I felt like I was ready to move on. Then I'm gonna move two more notes. So now I'm gonna be practicing the first four notes and I'm gonna count out loud and I'm gonna do it several times in a row until it feels really easy. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna think about what I'm doing and I'm gonna do it again. One, two, three, four. And I'm gonna do that as many times as it takes so that that feels really, really easy. And then I'm gonna move my post-it two more notes. So now I'm playing the first six notes, or in the case of this piece, the first measure and a half. One, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, I'm gonna try it again. One, two, three, four, one, two. And I'm gonna continue on until that feels easy. And then I think you can get the hang of it. You can continue to move by groups of two notes until you've finished your phrase or your section of music or the entire piece, depending on the length of the piece. Now, as I mentioned, I demonstrated with a really simple example, but it's a great example because you can see how it might apply to things that are more challenging. I can apply this to a tough cadenza that I'm trying to learn. I could apply this to one section of a piece. Maybe you're learning a piece and it feels pretty comfortable except for one spot. You can zoom in and you can use this posted method on that one spot. The other thing I want you to notice is that I was going super slow I was counting out loud and I was being rather methodical with what I'm doing. When we're looping it and we're making it our goal to do it three or five or 10 times in a row correctly, we don't wanna go so fast that we're making mistakes. If we're making mistakes while we do this, we're kind of defeating the purpose because our goal here is to do very small focused sections many times in a row. 
This practice method can seem kind of tedious because we're doing each section three or five or 10 times in a row, but because we're focusing on just a small number of notes, it actually goes by really quickly. I can usually do this practice method and accomplish quite a bit of music in about five or 10 minutes because you're so focused and you're really making sure that you are doing everything correctly. And so it's hugely efficient and beneficial. The other thing you can consider when you're doing this method of practicing is that you don't have to go two notes at a time. If the piece is challenging for you, but you're at a higher level of reading music, you can feel free to do maybe three or four or even five notes at a time because we're using this piece to help us learn something and to learn skills like coordination and playing hands together. We don't want to go more than five notes at a time. So don't try to take, you know, 10 measures at a time. That's too many. This post-it method will only work with small sections of music, meaning about two to five notes at the very max. The other thing you can do with the post-it method is you can actually bookend the post-its as you go on in your phrase or in your section of music. You might get to the point that you have eight or 10 notes in a row. And like I mentioned before, we want five notes maximum. So when we get to that point, we want to use another post-it at the beginning to start inching into the music like this so that we are always only practicing five notes in a row. So as we add more notes, we're also not starting at the beginning of the piece or the beginning of the section anymore. We're starting to start mid measure, which also helps us to get to know the piece on a much deeper level. One of the things that we know is that if we always start playing a piece from the very beginning and we do that every single time we practice and every single time we play the piece, it's gonna be really hard to get to know the notes inside of sections where we're not starting our piece. So we want to practice starting our piece in different sections, in different phrases. We don't always want to go from the very beginning to the very end. We want to break up that process so that the piece of music can get into the deeper layers of our memory. I hope that you found this video to be helpful. Go ahead and like the video. Let me know in the comments what you liked about it and subscribe to the channel so that you can watch my other helpful videos. Thanks so much. See you soon.